Science. Gaming for science, children visiting London's Science Museum were asked to contribute to a brain research project. Specialists caring for premature babies are developing a computer game that can measure the impact of premature birth on brain function. During the brain games at the museum, the performance of hundreds of volunteer children aged between six and seven has been tracked. And one is uh, executive attention, so the ability to hold information and to inhibit um, automatic responses. That's the idea. And then we have um, working memory, holding information in mind and manipulating the information online. And it's really important as it predicts academic achievement and other skills in life. And then we have selective attention, so the ability to focus their attention and to don't pay attention to distractors, and you could see that in the games. And we've got sustained attention, the ability to keep the attention for a long time. Some of the young children will now be asked back to the MRI imaging laboratory. The research team plan to scan 68-year-old children, 30 born prematurely and 30 born at term, to see if there are any differences in how the brain network develops over time. The amount of change that goes on at around the time that premature babies are born is massive. The brain becomes hugely bigger and much more complicated. Uh, when our youngest children are born, the brain is very smooth and looks like a coffee bean. And during the time that they're with us, it has to grow into the walnut-shaped, or walnut-looking uh, organ that we all know from, uh, from pictures of adult brains. So it's a massive amount of change that's going on, and they have to achieve this while they're outside their mothers when they should really be inside their mothers. A few decades ago, babies born prematurely had little chance of survival. That's changed dramatically but prematurity can still affect the child's development. So we'll have them play in the game while they're in the, in the MRI scanner. And with the MRI scanner, we can see which bits of their brain are active and how much of their brain is active during this game, and therefore learn what, what, what resources in their brain they're using to play the game with. And we, by that, we can try and compare them to children who've not been premature and see what the differences are. For these children at the Science Museum, the games are simply fun, but the results are serious and could one day help children born prematurely. French researchers are also trying to explore children and their minds. A recent study has put the focus on what happens inside the brain of young pupils while learning to read. For two years, ten kids have been monitored every two months while reading under the MRI scan. Researchers analysed and determined the brain circuit of reading and found an answer to a quite controversial question in France. Which reading method is better, global or syllabic? Okay. Well, the IRM scans clearly showed syllabic reading is the most efficient. People who learn with a phonic alphabetic method train the circuit of the left hemisphere, which is the most efficient universal reading circuit. People who pay a global attention on the form of the word do not use this circuit. Their attention is orientated in the right hemisphere to a much less efficient circuit for the analysis of reading. According to the scientists, the brain imaging confirmed their theory they've defended for years for a syllabic, not global, reading method. It could also partly explain the appearance of dyslexia and the degradation in the level of reading in France.